What's up everybody? In today's video, we're prepping for some IE power mods on our Mark 7 Golf R with some baseline dyno runs. And we're gonna answer the question, how much power is this little guy robbing you? Now I've been itching to get these parts on the car for over a month now, but before we can do that, we need to get a baseline dyno run so we can track our progress. And while we're on the dyno, I wanted to take the opportunity to address a question we get all the time, and that is, why do we offer the map tap boost tap? Let me explain. For those of you who don't know what a boost tap is, it's simply a device that gives you a port somewhere on your intake tract that runs a tube to an analog boost sensor so you can take a standalone boost reading. On most modern cars, you don't actually need one because you have a map sensor here on your intake manifold or somewhere on your charge pipe that's going to take an accurate boost reading for you. But let's say you're running a piggyback tuner or you have a different map sensor that is scaled vastly different than stock. You can't always accurately read that using an aftermarket gauge system and you will need a boost tap. Now on this engine, there are two main styles. One requires you to punch this hole out on this unused port on the side of your intake. And now you have a hole into your intake. You have an adapter here, runs tubing up into your dash for your gauge system. We offer this style, which is an aluminum block that sandwiches in between this map sensor and the intake manifold. Now, like everything, there are pluses and minuses to that setup. This is an OEM plus part that we can add to the intake. And then at any time, if you decide you wanna return your car to stock or take this off for some reason, you can do so. It's 100% reversible, just like our gauges. This style boost tap that requires you to punch this hole out on the side of your intake is not reversible. Once you punch that out, you can never unpunch that hole. You've made a hole in the side of your intake and now you can't undo that. Everybody's not comfortable with that. And so we wanted to offer a product that all customers can run. The downside to this style is that it's an aluminum block that's gonna retain heat. This map sensor is also your intake air temp sensor. So the question we get is, why would you offer a tap that has your intake air temp sensor in a hot aluminum block? Now on paper, that makes complete sense. A block of aluminum is gonna retain more heat than a thin piece of plastic. But the claims we see are that you're losing tons of power using one of these. And I have yet to have a single one of these people that make this claim give us any data to support that. So today we wanna to find out how much power do you lose by using one of these convenient aluminum blocks. So we're gonna run over to our friends at Pickups Plus Cars. They're right across town. They've got an all wheel drive dyno. We're gonna hit the dyno and see how much power we make and possibly lose. Now for reference, as we're driving over, we've got an ambient air temp of 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And our intake air temp is 45 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And I haven't been super hard on the car on the way over, just driving normally. We'll see how that lines up with the car on the dyno. At this red light, the IATs are starting to climb a little bit because now we're not moving as much air through the intake. While we're at it, we might as well get a stock zero to 60 run. That's not too bad for a stock car, 466. Here we are at Pickup Plus Cars in Lewis Center, Ohio. This is pretty close to where I grew up. I used to come here with my dad to get truck parts. But we've got the Golf R here and I installed that boost tap right next to the map sensor on my way over. So now it's heating up. We want it at the temperature it would be if it was fully installed. So we're gonna leave that on the car do a dyno run, get a baseline, and then we're actually gonna stack it under the map sensor and see what the difference in IATs are. So let's get inside, get this on the dyno, and see what happens. our first pull. All 
All right, looks like we made 267. Now we're gonna swap our boost tap under the MAP sensor. It's already nice and hot at the temperature of the rest of the intake, and we're gonna see what kind of change that has. I think we saw 143 degrees on our IETs running that last run. So that just snaps right into place. We're gonna run this bolt back in, and then our tubing doesn't go anywhere right now because we don't have an analog sensor on this, but we are going to simulate as if we were running an analog sensor and see what that does. So we actually saw that the intake air temp was lower on that run with the tap installed. And even though it was sitting here, we had this big fan blowing across it. We want to make sure it wasn't cooled down. We're going to let the engine run for a few minutes with the hood down, get it nice and hot in there and make sure we're heat soaked because we made the same power as our previous run. I think we were one horsepower different. So we let the car idle for a few minutes and then it's been sitting off with the hood down for a few minutes so that this gets nice and hot. And then we are gonna run it for the third time and see what our final results are. So in summary, 266 horsepower, pretty much what we expected, no surprises there. What is surprising is that our intake air temps actually dropped once installing that boost tap. And so being a big aluminum block that was preheated and heat soaked on the engine, I figured those numbers would go up, but they actually went down and we made the exact same amount of power. So no power loss there. I know this is a stock car, so maybe there's so much room within the tune that it can account for changes like that. and. You know, we're not gonna see those differences since we're not on the edge of tuning. I don't know, but I was expecting to see some power loss. I don't know if that's because the probe is pulled up out of the intake stream and now it's not gonna see that hot air flowing by, or is it like Matt was suggesting that that aluminum block is a large heat sink, just wicking heat out since it's cold? I don't know, you guys are the experts. Drop a comment below, give us your theory to what's going on in this situation. But as always, we really appreciate you guys watching these videos. We're excited to get our stage one parts on from Integrated Engineering in the next video, along with the stage one tune, and we're gonna see what kind of power we make then. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel, like it, leave me comments, and I'll see you in the next one.